Hi there, it's us, the Potato Museum Show, Tom and Meredith, and we are tackling a huge topic. Very complicated. Very complicated. And we're probably going to have to do several videos about and it. And we may have to start over and over and over. But you may have heard of the Irish potato famine, which was called, which was caused by a pathogen that attacked the potato. And there were only two varieties being grown by most Irish people. And it caused loss of life, people leaving the country. It was devastating. Okay, do we have a model of what the We effect, do, we have an actual like? potato from Ireland. Yeah, this was first in, this was one of the first bladed potatoes that was encased in plastic because they wanted and to be able to use it. we got to take it home with us, <laughs> lucky us. Yeah, look, at, so the potato, the, the, the pathogens, an airborne water mold fungus that attacks the leaves and then it eventually makes it down into the potato uh, tubers itself. And we have a brief video to show you uh, about this. Okay, let's see if we can get this started here. There we go. <laughs> Could be latently infected by the late blight pathogen. Between starch cells inside the infected seed tubers, Hyphia phytophthora infestans grow. While on the outside, the tubers look completely healthy. As soon as the infected tuber begins to germinate, the Phytophthora mycelium grows into the sprouting shoots. If the degree of infection is not too high, the plants emerge and survive without any sign of bearing the pathogen inside. It's not until a few weeks later that the first symptoms become visible. Brown lesions, especially at the base of the stem, but also in the leaf axils, where overnight dew formation encourages growth of the pathogen. Soon afterward, small brown lesions form on the leaves. They often have chlorotic borders. In humid weather, these necroses, found especially on the edges of the leaves, expand rapidly. On the underside of the leaf, whitish growth of the pathogen can typically be seen. It consists of a dense aggregation of branched hyphae, sporangiophores, bearing lemon-shaped structures on their tips. These sporangia are the asexually formed reproductive organs of Phytophthora infestans. Okay, Phytophthora infestans. What does that mean, Meredith? Uh, it means... Phyto is forgotten. plant. Oh, yeah, plant uh, uh, attacking... Phytophthora uh, is destroyer. Yeah. So it's a plant it's, destroyer. It sounds like a cartoon character. <laughs> but we... Uh, we. So, so, again, we were just showing this. Um, and what happened is that they didn't know... The origin of this, it, it was, a, but this whole thing, potato And it's blight. still been debated and debated, but guess one theory that seems pretty con consistent is that the uh, fertilizer that all these places wanted to buy was created by uh, the birds, the cormorants, okay. in, on an island off of Peru. Okay, now we're just going to back up. The potato uh, became a staple in Europe, and so it became healthier people. Healthier became. became a staple. It became, and so you had a healthier growing more demand population. More for the potato. More demand for food. Right. More and so, so to grow more food, what they have to they do? They needed fertilizer, and it was called guano, and it was made from bird poop and pee, and it was mined off these islands, uninhabited other than by birds. Look at this. Look off at these. Of Peru. Look at these mountains of uh, guano off of these and these islands that they would mine these were um and apparently there were hundreds of ships that would line up to get the guano and bring them across the sea to uh, you're, europe you're in the shadow you're going in the shadow yes and these <laughs> workers were basically chinese uh enslaved people who were forced to do this this incredibly stinky difficult work uh and look at this these ships you were just saying hundreds of ships would be in the harbor ready to load this uh, fertilizer, take it to ports in Europe and in North America. More precious than gold is what this book is talking about, the history of this trade. So the theory is, and there's a bunch of theories, that these ships were also carrying potatoes from South America 
potatoes had, were carrying the pathogen and they were the fertilizer and the potatoes were offloaded in the port of Antwerp, this is a theory, um, and the potatoes and the fertilizer were sent to, um, and the first outbreak was on the French-Belgian uh, border where they noticed this problem and it quickly spread. This was in uh, June 1845, they first noticed that the potato crop was um, being destroyed. By late summer, September 1845, it had spread throughout all of the potato growing area of Western Europe and the British Isles. And this is an airborne uh, pathogen so that the moister, the more moist the areas, growing areas like in Ireland, the better the spread of this pathogen. So we're going to talk more about this, but it's still a problem. Look at this headline from 1993. New fungus blight is threatening potato crops around the world. This is, causes damage up to millions of dollars worldwide. We're going to talk about it some more in other videos. Thanks for joining us at the Potato Museum. Hang in there. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs>